Remakes, remakes, remakes. That's today's word of the day. And don't worry, you don't have to scream real loud whenever someone says it. Whether you like them or hate them, they are everywhere. Movies, TV shows, video games, music, toys, and cartoons are being remade for a new generation. Few of them have been just as successful as the originals and are now ranked as classics on their own. While most of them have either strayed away from the original source material or played it too safe and didn't make any changes to it. But then there are shows, movies, cartoons, and video games that desperately need to be remade. Sometimes when looking back at these classics, they have flaws, they're outdated by today's standards, and they deserve a fresh coat of paint. Due to the inspiration of James's What If They Remade series, an episode two of Manic Expression's digression session talking about movie remakes, I'm gonna give you my list of the top 10 Nickelodeon shows that need to be remade. Now for those of you who are gonna give me a sob story saying, you're messing with my childhood. How dare you say that these shows need to be remade? They're fine the way they are. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> First of all, please calm down. I'm not messing with your childhood. I do admit that some of the shows on this list will not be as good as the original. This is just my opinion of shows that I feel can be brought up for a new generation because the concept, the characters, the setting, and the overall entertainment is still viable. The only shows that I've seen in Nickelodeon that are being remade are the game shows. Let's go to the next level. Second, I've spent six months watching almost every single Nickelodeon show from 1977 to today. When you say, you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you have to understand that the shows that you grew up with aren't as good as they once were. If you want to know more about that, take a look at my blog post called 90s Nickelodeon Classic or Overrated. Unless you watch them recently, you're relying on nostalgia to fuel your argument. That's not going to work here, I'm afraid. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here are the top 10 Nickelodeon shows that need to be remade. Number 10. Around the mid-90s, there were quirky little variety shows that would air before or during the shows. They had fun characters telling jokes, doing pranks, gags, and anything they wanted. A 1995 Cartoon Network had Cartoon Planet, a spinoff show from the animated late night talk show Space Ghost Coast to Coast. It starred Space Ghost arch nemesis Brack and Zorak. Before and during the shows, they would be airing the cartoons that were popular at the time. Nickelodeon would air a variety show on their own one year later. In 1996, we had the following show. That's right, it's Kablam! It was a show about two kids named Henry and June who would host a comic book show called Kablam! Henry was a straightforward, down-to-earth and calm kid, while June was an emotional, over-the-top kid who pesters Henry into insanity. They complemented each other very well and are very memorable characters. But the main meat of Kablam were the cartoons that they showed during the program. Sniz and Fondue, Action League Now, Life with Loopy, Prometheus and Bob, The Offbeats, and so much more. Each of these cartoon shorts had different characters, different concepts, and different styles of animation. And they were awesome! The show lasted until the year 2000, and so did Cartoon Planet. For the last decade, there were no animated variety shows. That is until March 2012, when Cartoon Planet made a huge comeback on Cartoon Network. They started airing their cartoons from the late 90s and early 2000s, such as Cow and Chicken, Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Evil Concarne, and so much more. Nickelodeon, you need to do a remake of Kablam! Have Henry and June come back, and instead of a paper comic book, let's have a digital comic book. Also, let's create new cartoon shorts with different characters, settings, and animation. Today's cartoons are either traditionally drawn or computerized. Mostly the computerized. Let's have some variety. Let's have traditionally drawn. Let's have computerized. Let's have claymation, stop motion, flash animation. The possibilities are endless. A remake of Kablam would be awesome to see. Number nine. Another variety show? Oh, hell yes. 
Around the 90s, there were no other shows like Wienerville. In fact, there's still no other shows like Wienerville. The show was about a man named Mark Wiener who created characters that were half humans, half puppets. They would have fun, quirky discussions and skits in a city called Wienerville. There would be characters such as Dottie, Socko, Boney, Zip, Cocktail Frank and the Weenies, and so much more. They were all very memorable and very funny. It just goes to show you how talented Mark Wiener is as a puppeteer, since he portrayed as almost all of them. At the end of every episode, they would take two kids from the audience and have them wienerized, or turn into half-human, half-puppets. They would play a game, and the winner would receive a golden hot dog trophy, and they would be slimed. That's 90s Nickelodeon all over it. The show, unfortunately, only lasted until one year, ending its run in 1994, and it was shown on reruns until 1997. Still to this day, not a lot of people remember Wienerville, and it's gotten to be one of the forgotten Nickelodeon shows. And that's a real shame. Wienerville was one of the most unique, kooky, and original shows that Nickelodeon has ever aired. If they got rid of the pop culture references and some of the cartoon shorts, then you look at Wienerville back and you, the show has holed up very well. This show needs to be back on the air and it needs to be updated for a new generation. Now you might be wondering, but wait a minute. Didn't Mark Wiener announce that he was going to be airing new episodes of Wienerville on YouTube? He did, but this new remake should be more similar to the earlier performances that he used to do back in the 70s and the 80s. His jokes were more for adults and they are still hilarious to watch. Let's be honest. The people who would even consider watching a Wienerville remake are the people who grew up with it. Kids who had never seen Wienerville would probably compare him to Jeff Dunham and his puppets. Mark is so much more wittier and creative than Dunham ever is. I would love to see Wiener's performances with his classic puppets, with modern jokes, edgy adult humor, and skits on the big screen once again. Wienerville is due for a remake. Number eight. I hate Stephanie Myers. I really, really do. Her Twilight Saga had turned classic monsters into bland, boring characters who gleam in the sunlight and look like male models with 12 packs. I feel really sorry for the kids who have to grow up looking at monsters portrayed like this. Once upon a time in the early to mid 90s, monsters such as vampires and werewolves were portrayed as scary and frightening for kids. We had spooky and creepy stories that thrilled us to the bone. Before Goosebumps would become a household name for scary stories for kids, and since we weren't allowed to watch Tales from the Crypt on HBO due to it for being for adults, Nickelodeon decided to give this to us instead. Oh, I can just smell the hate mail pouring through my inbox right now. What? Remake Are You Afraid of the Dark? How dare you? Hear me out, okay? For those who don't know, Are You Afraid of the Dark was a teen anthology series that debuted on Halloween night in 1991. It was about a group of kids known as the Midnight Society who meet up in a secret location every week and would tell a scary story. Each character had a different style of storytelling and it reflected on the story that it was portrayed. Some, star some stories were supernatural. Other stories were based on legends. Some stories had a Twilight Zone-esque sort of feel. At the time, it was very scary, thrilling, and spooky. It's the kind of show that gave kids nightmares. It was one of the most popular shows on SNCC. But looking back on it, there are some flaws. The members of the Midnight Society aren't developed enough. We're given vague backstories on the members and nothing else. We know that Kiki's a tomboy, but that's pretty much it. Frank is supposed to be a troubled, tough teenager, but we don't know what he did or how his backstory is or how he grew up. We know that Gary and Tucker are the leaders of the group at one point, Gary being the first and then Tucker being the second, but there's really not much to them after that. And all the other characters were a bit forgettable and bland. Let's face it, they were. We don't know where they live. We don't know if they go to the same school. We don't know what their home life is. We don't know how they came up with their stories. We don't even know their last name. They only appear in the show in less than five minutes. Three minutes at the beginning of each episode and less than two minutes after the story is over. That's it. The only characters who were developed maybe a tiny little bit were Gary and Tucker. If you recall from the episode in, seven, in the seventh season called The Tale of the Silver Sight, 
We find out that Tucker and Gary's grandfather had founded the Midnight Society, and he was the leader of the group. Gary had continued the family legacy, and he called forth his own friends to join the group. When Gary and his friends were too old to be members, they left and pursued another things. It wasn't until years later that Tucker brought his friends along, revived the Midnight Society, and he became the new leader. If Are You Afraid of the Dark ever gets remade, the members of the Midnight Society need to be developed more. We need to know what makes them tick. How do they create their stories? What goes through their minds when they come up with it? What were their inspirations? How do they finally find a style that they feel comfortable portraying it? This is a minor nitpick, but the, the members of the Midnight Society should be developed more. But the main thing that needs to be updated are the stories themselves. The actors who portray these stories are inconsistent with their acting. Some of the actors are really, really good, while the others are not. Their acting is either wooden or over the top. It's hokey, it's cheesy, and it's so hard to take the story seriously. The effects are outdated. The monsters aren't scary looking. The thrills are a bit underwhelming by today's standards. Overall, Are You Afraid of the Dark has lost its frightening edge as the years go on. However, this show is still recommended to check out because, to begin with, it was never meant to be scary. It was meant to be thrilling. Creator DJ McHale wanted Are You Afraid of the Dark to be a kid's version of The Twilight Zone and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And for that reason, the show still works. There are some episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark that still hold up to this day. If you want to know what my favorites are, check it out on the blog on Top 10 Are You Afraid of the Dark Episodes. With the surge of shows like True Blood and The Walking Dead that portray monsters scary again, a remake of Are You Afraid of the Dark would be great. Develop the members of the Midnight Society more, get better actors, heighten up the thrills and fear, update the effects, and make it more scary. Are You Afraid of the Dark needs to have a new remake. Number seven. Nickelodeon has had a lot of teen sitcoms starring female protagonists. I Carly, True Jackson VP, Zoe 101, Unfabulous, and Victorious. They have one thing in common. They all suck. The characters are annoying. The situations they get to are unrealistic. The writing is garbage. And there is nothing about these shows that kids can relate to. Very few shows have stood the test of time in Nickelodeon. And in my opinion, this classic teen sitcom needs to have a remake. The show that started it all with these female protagonists. This show, I would love to see have a remake. Oh, I can see the steam coming out of your ears right now. Clarissa Explains It All was one of the first teen series on Nickelodeon that had a female protagonist, and it paved the way for these other teen shows. It was about a girl named Clarissa Darling who would talk about her everyday life with the audience. She would be dealing with teenage problems such as boys, going to school, getting her first bra, getting a driver's license, and dealing with a very annoying brother named Ferguson. She loved music, was a huge fan of bands such as Pearl Jam and They Might Be Giants, which is actually refreshing because it seems like girls nowadays like pop music and boy bands like Katy Perry and One Direction. She loves video games, makes pop culture reference jokes, she believes in UFOs, she loves journalism, photography, and wears mismatched clothes that makes Blossom look actually normal. But however, looking at Clarissa Explains It All, it just screams 90s. The clothes, the hair, the pop culture references, the portrayal of all these things make it extremely outdated for today's standards. However, if you take all of those things away, Clarissa Explains It All has actually held up. The show is so realistic because the characters are relatable. Clarissa is not perfect by any means. Her family is goofy yet caring. Her brother is annoying yet intellectual. And her friends are enthusiastic yet down to earth. This show needs a remake. We can bring Clarissa to the 21st century by updating her wardrobe, her computer, her pop culture jokes, and her taste in music. Instead of Pearl Jam and They Might Be Giants, let's have some indie rock bands like Bell and Sebastian or LCD Sound System to make her stand out. Whenever Clarissa plays a computer game, let's update the sprites and have the games either be a modern retro game 
or a Mass Effect-like game in which she's going through a situation and she needs to make a decision on what to do. However, we should keep what made Clarissa a standout compared to the girls of today. Let's keep her quirky. Let's let her have her everyday struggles of growing up and let it have a coming of age story in which she starts off in middle school and then ends the series with her graduating from high school. The family deserves the biggest update out of all of them. Let's make Ferguson a bright, intelligent, conniving little boy instead of being just annoying. A huge pain in the ass for Clarissa. The one that comes to mind for me is either Carl Foutley from As Told by Ginger, but a lot less gross, or the little boy from the middle. Ferguson in the original show was a Republican. His role models were Randy Quayle and Ronald Reagan. Let's switch it up a little bit for this remake. Let's make him a libertarian who looks up to men like Gary Johnson. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were parents who grew up in the 60s. And they're pretty much flower children, especially Mrs. Darling. Mrs. Darling was an environmentalist yuppie who cared for nature and is an organic foodie. She serves vegetarian meals that are supposed to be quote-unquote healthy, but they're tasteless, they're bland, and they're disgusting. We've come such a long way from having delicious organic foods. Let's have a better theme with all these kind of foods. Let's have her maybe be a very open-minded mom who traveled around the world and is serving kids foods such as Indian food or Thai food or Mexican food. Any food that can be really cleansing to the palate. Food that can be new, that can be fresh. But the kids are a little fearful for it because they're used to takeout food like pizza and, and Chinese food or whatever. That could be a really nice update to have foods that we don't see very often like Indian food. Then we have Mr. Darling. He always called Clarissa sport, and he was very clueless to how he gave advice to her. You know what? Let's clean out that cliche. I am so sick and tired of having these goofy dads. We need a straightforward, down-to-earth dad. We need somebody with a little bit more edge. Maybe somebody who's either neglectful or maybe somebody who is really strict somebody who's really down to earth. We need an adult that can be able to give Clarissa that advice that she really needs. We need somebody who can be able to be awkward towards her because, you know, he's a guy. What can he say? Instead of parents who grew up in the 60s, let's have parents who grew up in the 80s. You know, parents who grew up with the likes of Madonna and Punky Brewster and Transformers. That would be a really interesting, refreshing thing to portray. Sure, the characters would have to be portrayed a little bit younger, but it could still be done. And then we have Sam. Yes, Sam, the enthusiastic, hyperactive kid who loves skateboarding and always is best friends with Clarissa. Sam actually has a really interesting background. He has a very dysfunctional family. His dad is single, but yet he doesn't see him as much. And his mom travels a lot because of her job. Sam is mostly alone, yet at the same time, he's constantly visiting the Darling family and he's always so happy. Let's give him a little bit of edge. Let's let him keep that happiness and that enthusiasm. But at the same time, let him have a little bit of moments in which he feels sad that his parents are not around as much. Whatever that you want to say about Clarissa not having a remake, I think that it should. Clarissa Explains It All is a show that really deserves to have a remake. Number six. Around the 90s, there were a lot of mystery series for kids such as Ghost Rider, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, and Sherlock Holmes of the 22nd Century. Nickelodeon created a mystery teen series called The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu. The show was about a girl named Shelby Wu who worked part-time in a police station, organizing the leftover paperwork in an office. Whenever a case occurs, Shelby Wu and her friends go out to solve a case, even with the disapproval of the detectives and her own grandfather. A good number of the cases were actually quite good, including one that I refer to as the Jason case. To know more information about the Jason case, look it up on my review of The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu. With a huge recent popularity of mystery movies such as the Sherlock Holmes movie starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, and their modern adaptations like Sherlock and Elementary, Shelby Wu deserves to have a remake. The mysteries need to be more consistent and thrilling in the remake. In fact, Focus one mystery per season, that way it can keep people guessing 
and it can keep people tuning in as opposed to just one episode in which it has one mystery and then at the end of every episode they solve it. It tends to be a little bit monotonous and it tends to be a tad bit forgettable. You need to focus more on the side characters in the remake. The only characters who were actually memorable were Shelby Wu and the grandfather. The detectives and Shelby Wu's friends were really bland, forgettable, and they were just there. The characters need to have more depth and development. And also, continue the Shelby Wu treatment and have the main characters be Asians. We don't see a lot of Asians on television. We want to see fresh-looking faces. An Asian would be perfect to continue the rank of Shelby Wu. Also, with that, who would be the grandfather? Well, Pat Morita would always be the original grandfather. However, as you know, who would be Shelby Wu's grandfather? Well, it has to be somebody who was once a really good Asian actor, but hasn't had something fantastic in a while. A few of them that come to mind is probably maybe Chow Young Fat, who was really popular with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That may sound a little bit odd for some of you, but think about it. Pat Morita was originally Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid trilogy, and then he portrayed himself as Shelby Wu's grandfather. Maybe Chow Young Fat could be the new grandfather, or maybe better yet, maybe he could be an uncle. That would be a really good one. Let's have a little bit more variety in the show. Let's have other characters. Let's have Native Americans in the show. Maybe Inuit. Who knows? The possibilities could be endless. If Nickelodeon wishes to make a remake of Shelby Wu, then they need to take notes from ABC's family's Pretty Little Liars. Don't make a carbon copy of the show, but see what they're doing and learn from it. That show is the proper way of doing a teenage mystery thriller series for a modern audience. Number five. We had a huge plethora of sketch comedy shows back then. Saturday Night Live, Kids in the Hall, Mad, there were so many classic sketches that we would remember looking back and laughing at. Nickelodeon has at this point had four sketch comedy shows. But which are the ones that is going to be our number five spot? That's right, it's all that. The sketch comedy show that brought us classic skits like Good Burger, The Loud Librarian, Ear Boy, Randy and Mandy, and so much more. We need to have this updated for a modern audience. Let's start from scratch. And I mean literally from scratch. I don't want any of the former Nickelodeon stars such as Miranda Cosgrove, Janet McCurdy, Victoria Jackson. No, bullshit. I want brand new, fresh faced kids who have a little bit of acting experience to be able to portray as the kids from all that. This show needs a new identity. It can't just ride off from the original. We need new skits. We need new characters. We need new directions. We need writers who have written in classic shows such as Saturday Night Live. We need writers who can be able to write hilarious skits. Maybe some writers from 30 Rock or Parks or Recreations or Modern Family. Any show that has been funny for the last couple of years need to give a lending hand to making all that a real, true, hilarious, and refreshing take on the 1994 show. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how dare you, you deserve to die. Hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. I love the original All That. I really do. I love the first three seasons of the show. Let's be honest, it's been almost a decade since All That was canceled. It's prime for a new generation. There are no, I repeat, no sketch comedy shows for kids. This is the perfect time to present it. Yeah, you know what? All that just seems like a 90s name. Let's change the name altogether. That's right. Let's go completely from scratch from this. Let's take the concept of all that. And let's create a new sketch comedy show. Yeah, that's right. I mean it. Let's create a new sketch comedy show from scratch. Let's, because all that was inspired by You Can't Do That on Television, another Nickelodeon sketch comedy show from the 80s. Let's have the same thing. Let's have somebody create a new sketch comedy show for kids that was inspired by all that. I want to see that happen. That remake deserves to be made for Nickelodeon. Number four. 
Let's face it, there's one genre that Nickelodeon fails to do, and that is the sci-fi series. Invader Zim is, as of now, the best sci-fi series that Nickelodeon had ever released. However, the show was canceled around the second season. You can tell that Nickelodeon has sucked pretty hard when it comes to that. There is one sci-fi series, however, that attempted to be really, really good. It had a really creative and unique concept that is rarely replicated even in today's time. I would love to see a remake of this show done. If it was more fully realized, if it was done the way it should have been in the first place, then we got ourselves an instant classic. Doesn't ring a bell to you? Don't remember Space Cases? That's okay. Most people don't remember this show at all. Space Cases was the very first sci-fi series that aired on Nickelodeon in 1996. It consisted of five kids from different planets. It consisted of Harlan from planet Earth, Bulva from planet Uranus, Radu from the Andromedan Galaxy, Rosie from planet Mercury, and Catalina from Titan, a moon in Saturn. One day, while sitting through detention, Harlan sees a ship approaching their school. Harlan decides to look around the ship, but his friends say no. Harlan doesn't listen to them anyway, as he continues running towards the ship. While the friends look around the ship, they get themselves caught by the teacher, Davenport, and the principal, Goddard. All of a sudden, the ship starts automatically as it zooms into hyperspace. The only way to control the ship is if the kids would work together. When finally learning that, they were light years away from their school. The only way to get back is to travel at fast hyperspeed for the next seven years. The show mostly consisted of the kids and the adults wanting to go home. The characters are surprisingly well developed in this TV series. Each of them have their flaws, each of them have their quirks, each of them have a little backstory behind them. For example, Harlan is from planet Earth. He attends the school because he wants to be a star dog or an intergalactic soldier like his father was. He wants to avenge his father because he was killed during the Andromedan War. Radu is an Andromedan from the Andromedan Galaxy. He's a quiet, calm, and decisive kid who's the navigator of the group. He feels alone at times because, traditionally, Andromedans are laid from eggs and are left to fend for themselves. He feels the need for a family. At first, Harlan and Radu don't like each other, mostly because Harlan doesn't like Andromedans since one killed his father during the Andromedan War. However, Radu feels pain for the Andromedan War as well, because they were going off and fighting against an evil species. Overall, it was shaping to be a really interesting show. However, the show has severe flaws. Number one, the acting in this show is atrocious. It is almost unwatchable because Space Cases is portrayed as hokey and cheesy in a time in which it's supposed to be serious. The problem is with the actors. Most of the actors don't even know what they're doing. The characters, while they're really interesting, they're not portrayed very well. Also, the show is very cheap looking. Due to a very low budget, Space Cases had to rely on using old props from former Nickelodeon shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark and The Adventures of Pete and Pete. The show ended in the second season without anything happening. This show needs a remake desperately. We need to get back on the horse of creating a really well put, really well cohesive, and really well written sci-fi series. The concept is there. The characters are there. We just need better actors, better writers, more money, and it will shape up to be an instant Nickelodeon classic. Right now, the only sci-fi show that I can recommend for Nickelodeon is Invader Zim. Space Cases has all the potential to be a really good show. Remake it, Nickelodeon. Remake it. Number three, Double Dare. Wild and crazy kids. Guts. And figure it out. What do these shows have in common? They've been remade. However, most of those remakes have been absolute failures. Either they've been playing too safe like Wild and Crazy Kids and Double Dare were, or they stray from the original source material like Guts. I mean, seriously, my family's got guts? What the fuck were you thinking? 
There is one Nickelodeon game show that desperately needs a remake. And I mean desperately. The concept is there. The ideas can still work. This show is absolutely fantastic. And it desperately, desperately needs a remake. Nickelodeon Arcade. This show is begging to be remade. I have no idea why nobody even thought of this. For those who don't know, Nick Arcade was a show that came out in the year 1991. It was a show about a group of kids who played video games. The host was Phil Moore, and the whole point of the game was to control Mikey, the little video adventurer, all the way up into the levels. The levels consisted of medieval times, the neighborhood, outer space, and so much more. Every square that they land on, they would get either a pop quiz, a, they would get points, they would get prizes, or they would enter the video challenge. In the video challenge, they would play a video game consisting of either Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or Sonic the Hedgehog, Act Razor, or so much more. But the main thing that everybody remember from this show was the video zone. The video zone is when you get to go inside and play the video game. You didn't just play the video game in video zone, you were in the video game. You got to be in the video game. Nick Arcade was really ahead of its time with its innovative blue screen effects. Sure, in today's standards, it doesn't seem like a really big deal. I mean, after all, we see blue screen and green screen effects all the time. Critics and online people use it all the time for their reviews. We see it all the time in movies and TV shows. But 20 years ago, Nick Arcade was one of the first who did it. However, when looking back on the original Nick Arcade, it is so unbelievably flawed. Here are the main gripes. Number one is Phil Moore himself. Phil Moore seems like a really nice guy in real life, but to me, he is so unbelievably goofy. He is the goofiest host that Nickelodeon ever had for a game show host. He clearly does not know a thing about video games. First of all, he called Dr. Robotnik Dr. Roboneck. Really? Dr. Roboneck? Seriously? Dr. Roboneck? If you say Dr. Roboneck in front of your friends back in 1991, you're going to look like a complete dumbass. Number two, the prizes sucked. They consisted of candy, a basketball hoop, VHS tapes, a bike, skateboard, a karaoke machine? That's it? That's all the prizes? Yeah, Nick Arcade had gave out the one of the worst prizes in any Nickelodeon game show ever. The second being Euron. Euron only gave one prize. And guess what? That show was hosted by Phil Moore as well. Jeez. I guess Phil Moore is known for being picked for shitty game shows. Number three, they didn't utilize the video game concept the way it should have been. The only video games that we see are from the beginning, during the video challenge, during the middle, and during the video zone. Why couldn't everything be based on video games? Why couldn't the questions be on video games, first of all? I mean, you have the pop quizzes. Mikey was in a different setting in every episode. Make the settings follow a video game. Let's just say you're in medieval times. Ask questions about Final Fantasy. Uh, another one. Let's just say you're in outer space. Ask questions about Metroid. Ask questions about Star Fox. But the one thing, the absolute one thing that makes this show so flawed are the contestants. The contestants suck ass. These contestants clearly don't play video games in real life, especially the girls. They lose almost every time. You just want to scream at the TV because you know you can do so much better than they can. This is the game show that I pray has a remake. The elements are still there. You can be able to make a wonderful video game themed game show work in today's times. Video games have come a very long way from being just cartridges in your NES and SNES. We can have video game themed questions. We can have categories based on video games. We can go into different time periods. Let's have one episode take place in the 80s. Let's have one episode talk about video games from the 90s. Let's have 
the video zone more updated. Let's have the kids who play video games actually know how to play video games. Let's have a much more down-to-earth host. Let's have a host who is knowledgeable with video games and who won't say stupid shit like Dr. Roboneck. This is the game show that I want to see remade. Nickelodeon, I know that arcades don't exist anymore. Well, actually they do, but not as much, but still, nonetheless. This is the game show that I desperately, desperately want to see remade. The audience is still there. Kids love video games. We want to see something like this come into fruition. Make it happen, Nickelodeon. Make it happen. Number two, <sighs> Thomas W. Lynch. I want to like you. I really want to like you. You have created Caitlyn's Way, the most underrated, most realistic, most flawless Nickelodeon teen sitcom that it has ever been put on the air. A show that many people should be talking about as opposed to iCarly and True Jackson VP and Victorious. Why couldn't you create a show that was more fully realized like Caitlyn's Way? Instead, you had to create shows like Romeo and The Journey of Alan Strange. Why? Why? Why did you have to create shows like that? Your writing is down-to-earth, realistic, and a breath of fresh air compared to all the stale, pop culture -y bullshit that we're being fed nowadays with iCarly and Victorious. There is one show that Lynch created that I feel deserves to be remade. A show that is both brilliant, down to earth, has a awesome, awesome concept. The original does no justice to it whatsoever. If this show were to be remade and fully realized of what it could have been, you have a ticket to one of the greatest teen shows that not only Nickelodeon has ever produced, that has ever been made. The Secret World of Alex Mack. Never has a show had such a brilliant concept just wasted with what it could have been. For those who don't know, the show Alex Mack features a teenage girl named Alex Mack who lives in a very small town in California. One day when walking home from school, a truck accidentally crashes and Alex Mack is left with a whole bunch of chemicals being poured on her. When getting home, she finds that she has supernatural powers given by the chemicals. The powers contain shooting electricity from her fingers, telekinetic powers, and being able to turn into a puddle so she can be able to crawl around from place to place. The people who are involved with the chemicals in the power plant want to find the person who is responsible for having these powers. They want to test on the person and experiment on it because they want to release the main chemical ingredients on a weight loss drug. The chemical, known as GC-161, hasn't been tested on humans yet, but regardless, the leader of the group doesn't care. This person is cold, heartless, and will do anything to make a lot of money. She has control of the entire town. Everything is practically named after her. She wants to find this person right before they report to the police. Alex wants to keep her secret because she doesn't want to be found by the power plant. The show consisted of Alex living off her everyday school life, dealing with everyday problems such as boys and driving, getting her first bra, and more. Along the way, you see the truck driver and his assistant trying to find the girl who has the secret powers. The problem is, is that the truck driver knows who Alex is. He doesn't want to tell his boss who the girl is because he knows that the girl will be experimented on horribly. So the entire show focuses on this huge propaganda. But the problem is, is that it's not fully realized. The majority of the show is about Alex living off her everyday school life. She doesn't use her powers that often. And if she does, it's very rarely that she would use them for good or for revenge. 
That was what she should have used her powers for in the first place, either for good or for revenge. Why couldn't she be like a female version of Daredevil? In which she does have these powers, in which she uses them at night, or she uses them to help people. Why couldn't she use her powers to her advantage? Why couldn't she shut down the power plant because it's being controlled and manipulated by the entire town? I, 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 there was just... They tried to do a realistic show with an average girl, just like Clarissa explains it all. But Clarissa Explains It All makes sense because Clarissa Explains It All focused on a teenage girl with problems. You have somebody with powers! You could have had her go over to the power plant and you could have had her approach the boss and say, listen, you can't release this chemicals as a weight loss drug. You're going to cause a lot of people damage to their bodies. I'm going to stop you. No, we, we only get that until the very end of the show, which, in my opinion, is the best ending to any Nickelodeon teen series in the 90s ever was. I... I'm sorry, but there are just so many things I could fix. First of all, we need to take this concept and do it right. Forget about the whole, let's relate to the teenage girl sort of thing, and let's have her be kick-ass. Let's have her be a really strong, capable girl who is capable of defending herself and using these powers to her advantage. Because that is an awesome show right there. The Secret World of Alex Mack was overshadowed by so many other great shows that came out in the 90s. In the late 90s, you had Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Felicity, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Why couldn't you make Alex Mack like Buffy? She has a regular school life, but she kicks ass at night. You could have done that. I want to see this show remade. I want to see Alex Mack have her powers. I want to see her use her powers for good or for revenge. I want the characters from the power plant to be more developed because we rarely see them. Why, why don't we get to know the truck driver? The truck driver was the one who caused this mess. He was the one who crashed the truck, and he was the one who caused Alex to get the powers in the first place. How is he feeling? Is he feeling guilty? Is he feeling happy about it? Is he not caring? We don't know that. We don't know that at all. What about the boss? We know of her as being cold and heartless and not caring about people. But how does she become that way? How did the power plant start? How does she get control of the whole town? We don't know that. Whoever's out there who thinks that Alex Mack can be remade, do it and do it right. This show craves for a remake because it has the greatest concept for a teen series you will ever find. And it was on Nickelodeon. You can just start from scratch of getting rid of the whole poppy, burly things that iCarly and Victorious is doing and start making all these really cool, realistic, kick-ass shows. The first show I want to see is a remake of The Secret World of Alex Mack. Make it happen. And my number one Nickelodeon show that desperately needs a remake is Roundhouse. Roundhouse is the number one Nickelodeon show that desperately needs a remake. Talk about something that is so creative. Talk about a concept that has never been done before, or even since then. For those who don't know, Roundhouse was a sketch comedy show that was released in Nickelodeon in 1993. The show was essentially a group of 20-year-olds doing improv. They would have a theme, and they would act around that theme. Then in the middle of the show, they would be having dance skits in which they would be improving themselves. The entire show is basically improving. Sounds great, right? The end result of Roundhouse is absolutely awful. This show is unwatchable. This show is unbelievably atrocious. You have a concept about improv for kids and you couldn't even get it right. The jokes are boring. The jokes go too quickly. The dance skits are outdated by today's standards. It is so unbelievable that no other show from any network tried to replicate this. But then again, nobody knows about Roundhouse. They never even knew it existed. 
The reason why was because Roundhouse had a shitty time slot. Roundhouse, when it first came out, it was sandwiched between all the good shows from SNCC. When Roundhouse first came out, it was aired before Are You Afraid of the Dark and after Clarissa Explains It All. No wonder nobody remembered this show. Kids wouldn't even watch it. They would just skip the show altogether and then wait for the next show to come out that was even cooler. The Nickelodeon executives didn't even give Roundhouse a chance. They didn't even give a lot of advertising for this show. They hated it to begin with, and it showed. Nobody, I repeat, nobody remembers Roundhouse. The kids from the 80s remember You Can't Do That on Television. The kids from the 90s remember all that and The Amanda Show. Nobody remembers Roundhouse. With a concept this cool, it is such a shame that Roundhouse didn't go so far. But the execution of it is awful. The jokes, if, it, if one joke is not funny, then they would switch the joke off in the next 10 seconds and hopefully you get a laugh from it. Yeah, great show. This show needs to be remade so badly because the concept is so unique. Let's have it be more like a whose line is it anyway for kids. Just like with all that, let's start completely from scratch. Let's have a group of kids and teenagers who have really good acting experience, who can do improv on the fly, who can be able to create funny jokes, who can be able to sing, who can be able to dance, who can be able to interact with a host who is funny. I would love to see something like that happen. It pains me to know that there is no other show like this. Nickelodeon, please. I'm begging you, do a remake of Roundhouse, but make it so in which it's funny. Make it so in which it's memorable. Just as memorable as all that. Just as memorable as you can't do that on television. Just as memorable as the Amanda show. We know that it can be done and it can be done well. Use Roundhouse's original concept and branch it out for the new generation. I know it can be done. And that's why Roundhouse is the number one show from Nickelodeon that I want to see remade. What show do you want to see being remade for Nickelodeon? Post in the comment below and let me know. Until then, I'm Patricia and I hope to see you around old school lane soon. Thanks for listening.